so far, the momentum on these stories is, first of all, there's so many stories to be told that what's coming out is, and is so upsetting. Um, and in many cases, so persuasive that it hasn't fully turned yet, but you can sense everybody wants it to turn back to how it's comfortable. And I'm saying this about both men and women. I see many women in my social media spheres worrying that this is going to, this is turning into a witch hunt that this is, and that's yeah. always the term that's used, you know, I, so yes, that's going to happen at any moment. And then of course there are professional repercussions for women after that, because as long as men still have the power, but then they're, they're told to be wary of the women who might come and misinterpret their, you know, innocent gestures as harassment, women will, you know, in very subtle ways and some not so subtle ways probably start to suffer. There'll be less mentorship of women by men. Perhaps women will be hired less or sent on work trips less frequently. I mean, those kinds of implications are, are long-term down the road implications, and they're going to be in place as long as men have a disproportionate share of the economic and professional power, which they continue to do. So yes, I'm very, it is, this is a moment in which there are so many contradictory things happening that, you know, it is both thrilling and horrifying. And I feel all those ways about it. What kind of structural changes could happen to channel this immense energy for the good into permanent change? Well, I mean, the biggest structural change and the only thing about which I have any long-term hope is actually acknowledging how much of this stems from patriarchal, white patriarchal power structure and working to actually reverse that power structure, which of course is also the hardest and most long-term project. And that, you know, in the piece that I wrote about this, the long piece that I wrote about this, I actually cite the elections that recently happened, the 2017 special elections in which you saw so many women, many of them angry women, winning elections against, in many cases, their actual sort of male oppressors, the uh, Danica Rome, who won her special election, um, she's a transgender candidate who won a special election against a white man who had put forth one of the anti-trans bathroom bills. Built himself as homophobe in chief. Yes, homoph homophobe in chief. And she beat him. She replaced him. And that uh, is also true. There's a woman in New Jersey who was angry after a white male lawmaker made fun of the Women's March and said, well, why aren't those women home cooking dinner? And she ran against him and she beat him. She took a seat. And so I write in my piece that that's not just retaliation, that's replacement. And that is actually, if you look at the power structures, political, professional, economic, and you say, actually what we need to do is end the power imbalance that permits this kind of behavior to persist over centuries, right? that is going to be the only solution. But that is years in the making. I mean, I certainly, there are a lot of women running for office in 2018, but this is not going to be solved in one year or one election cycle or just by looking at electoral politics. This is solved and this is only to be solved in, you know, when it reaches to every company and also when it reaches beyond the elite professions, because this is something I also am concerned about, about this moment. Not to take away from the the horrifying stories that we're learning about so many of, of these men, but mostly we're learning about them, about very powerful men in very high earning and elite professions. And what we're not hearing about for the most part are women who are working in factories, in warehouses, on rest, in restaurants, in the service industry, the tip service industry where harassment is uh, perhaps at its worst. I saw that 700,000 farm workers have made a statement in support of the women of Hollywood. We need to get the women of Hollywood to act in support of the women farm workers. There are all kinds of voices um, who are not yet present in this conversation. And I think that that is, I think that's another crucial thing that we need to address. And we need to address that the gender power imbalances, the economic imbalances that, that leave women susceptible to this kind of treatment and with limited resources in terms of fighting against it, those have to be reversed sort of in every profession, uh, in every workplace. And that is, that is a generation's worth of work ahead of us. And it's, it's what we need to do, but it's not something that's going to be fixed in the next you know, six months, 18 months, 18 years, we have to just, it's what we have to continue to work toward. And if there's something that can come out of this moment, it is, I hope, a reckoning with how 
dramatically unjust those power imbalances are and that helps to undergird everyone's work toward reversing those power imbalances or not reversing them, but, but getting to something resembling actual gender equality. I don't need women to have the disproportionate share of power. I need women to have an equal share of power.